Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're on the range testing the penetration of our 1777 Charleville flintlock musket on this approximation of a human head. I'm always trying to find a new spin or something fun to do with muzzleloading. It's, it's old, it's old technology, but it doesn't have to be the same thing over and over again. And uh, when a sale came up on these ballistic gel and plastic uh, skull heads, I just thought, you know, we might as well see what we can do with one of those and see what happens when we shoot it with a muzzleloader. And so I got thinking, what is the biggest muzzleloader that I have? And the 1777 Charleville musket with a 69 caliber bore came to mind. In the Charleville musket, we're shooting a paper cartridge. This is a typical recreation uh, with modern materials of a Continental Army paper cartridge that would have been used in a 1777 era Charleville musket. It's made up of a few parts. We obviously have the newsprint paper actual cartridge. We have a 67 caliber lead round ball down here. It's tied at the base and tied at the top. This is a little bit uh, wishy-washy on the historical accuracy. I was experimenting with keeping them from coming apart at the bottom, which is why we have tied at the bottom. Inside the top of the cartridge here, we have 80 grains of Go-X 2F powder. We're using 2F because we have such a large bore. 2F powder is really good for muskets just like this one. So I had the head, I had the musket, and I got to thinking, if we're using an American Continental Era musket from the American War for Independence, it only makes sense to dress up the head as a red coat soldier. So that's what we have here today. This is set at about, you know, 20 yards or so from where we're shooting. The accuracy I'm getting out of this musket is good, but I don't want to be out here all day trying to hit this head. So we're going to step up a little bit closer inside 25 yards. We're going to load this in a similar manner to what would have been done in 1777 with the 1777, 1777 Charleville, uh, but we aren't going to be priming the pan before we send the rest of the charge down the barrel. <laughs> Looks like I hit a little high and to the to the left there, but you can see that skull just totally broken away. There's some sections there and a little bit of a trail here as we come back around. So we've lost a big chunk of the skull here. You can see as an English red coat, he has a very thick skull uh, as noted right here. You can see those layers. Um, we've definitely shot some goo out of there. Overall, we hit it. I'm happy about that, but I'm going to load up another cartridge here to see what we can do with a second shot. Coming up to it here, uh, we shot, I think, the brain right out. Look at that. Oh, geez, Louise. I'll set that there for now. The rest of the head is down here. We just took the upper half of the face and the head just clean off. I mean, just snapped the, snapped the skull right off the spine, shot the brain straight out of the head. I mean, just right, right gone. There's a section of the, the cheek and the eye there. I don't know. I don't know if they're putting them back together, folks. As far as the rest of the blowout goes, have some skull fragments back over here. It's a section of the jaw. I hope you've enjoyed this somewhat comical, somewhat gruesome look at the effectiveness of the Charleville musket against the head of the traditional red coat. But, uh, you know, I had a lot of fun doing this. If you'd like to see more stuff like this, uh, let me know. These things aren't cheap, but uh, they are a lot of fun to, to bring out to the range here and, uh, and test against the muzzleloader. Um, just kind of a neat thing to do, something a little bit different than the milk jugs. 
If you'd like to learn more about the 1777 Charleville musket and the other firearms used in the American Revolution, uh, check out the link below at ilovemuzzleloading.com. We'll have a full list there of some books and some other historical documentation for you to check out. Uh, to learn a little bit more about this great musket, we'll also have a few more videos on our channel here at I Love Muzzleloading documenting and sharing some of the history and some of the stories that go along with America's first military weapon. I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. From what I've seen, he has pretty good teeth. The, the teeth on this aren't really historically accurate for the English from the period.